I was thinking of what Trevor said last night, Trevor Manuel, he was referring to Egypt. And you know, in the way Trevor talks, we were all thinking, what is he thinking about? What is he saying? But I think he was saying in part how difficult it would be if you were a, <clears throat> a think tank now in Egypt to decide whether to work inside the system or outside the system. Um, given the, the change in the last week um, because of the military. So I wanted to start by saying very much uh, CGD and what I'll be trying to convey to you in a few minutes, uh, we very much do work for the most part inside the system. We're not working on deep political changes. But I think that's true for most think tanks in the world and most of those of you who are here, that we're working inside the system to try and get policy fixes. So I put the word fixes into the title here. Um, that are specific and possible. They may lead to major change, but in the beginning they're just, you can almost think of them sometimes as, as incremental to the uh, existing system. Um, so the system may itself be politically driven, but for most of us, we're working in settings where the government is somewhat permeable. It's possible to introduce change. Now the second thing I wanted to say from the title is <clears throat> from research, just to mention that uh, one of the things that I think has worked very well for us at the Center for Global Development is having really fantastic scholars but scholars with a passion to change things. And for the most part, scholars who have had some experience inside the system <laughs> that we're trying to, some, usually to fix. So it's that combination of passion, experience, and scholarly work that starts things off. And the second thing that we have is, as many of you do, a communications and outreach team. Um, and the vice president we have for communications and policy outreach is influencing the scholars every day. He's constantly asking, why would you do that? Why would you do this? What do you hope to get out of that? And he's reinforcing that process. We are, we're all reinforcing that process with each other. We have a weekly uh, seminar, every other week a seminar, and the inter uh, veening weeks, a kind of senior staff lunch where we kick ideas around. So I think all of these are a little bit behind what, what's going on at the center. What I wanted to go through in 12 steps, and I have sort of 30 seconds for each step, is um, a process that was in effect invented uh, at the center about eight or nine years ago by uh, Ruth Levine who spoke yesterday, I don't know if she's here today, um, and we call it a working group, but it's a kind of loosely structured process, as you'll see. And she and the vice president we have for uh, communications and outreach wrote a note, which I've adapted slightly, on 12 steps for learning from Andrea's um, presentation, learning while influencing. They called it learning while doing. And those 12 steps are related to the idea of a fix. You have a policy fix in mind, and then it becomes, in our center, something we call a policy initiative. And an initiative has a beginning and an end. It could be one year, it could be three or four years, it could be six months, and someone leads the initiative. So that's what I'm gonna try and go through very quickly, how that works in a very general sense. Now, I was thinking, well, how could you apply this in your mind? So we have something going on at the center now, another colleague of mine that's called Oil to Cash. And this is the idea that as in Alaska, a government like Tanzania, Mozambique, Ghana, uh, some countries in Asia that discovers a new natural resource. In the case of Tanzania, for example, it's natural gas. Um, how can that government manage that resource to avoid the problems of a corruption and waste that often occur in a, um, in a developing country setting when there's a sudden bonanza, a windfall of easy money. 
So, you know, how to avoid the problem of becoming as, having the problems that Nigeria and Angola have had and instead uh, have the, the opportunities that Norway, for example, has had. So I have that a little bit in my mind. And you, you all have some policy fix, probably, that you're working on or thinking about. So maybe you'll help, help us all think, each of you will think about that. So the first thing is to choose this policy problem. And the idea here is not to choose a general research topic, like the problem of inequality. That's not a policy initiative. Um, and not to choose something that's so difficult, so partisan in a particular political context that it's hard to imagine getting anywhere. In my country, it would be, you know, should we have a different kind of health system? <laughs> that's a tough problem. So find the right person or persons to lead the initiative. <clears throat> I think that's kind of obvious in many ways. You, you all have colleagues and staff who would do that. It's good to have a person that has interpersonal skills as well as knowing the topic and being an expert and being passionate about the fix or the change. Um, look for money. Now this is in the 12 steps that my colleagues put together. I do want to say here that sometimes it's possible to get started without money. And because this is not an expensive process, this working group, as you'll see. And then to a, maybe money will come because money also often follows a good idea or a good process. Um, the leader puts together the group. Now, who's in the group? When we've had these working groups at the center, they will include usually some colleagues at the center. There are about a dozen senior fellows at the Center for Global Development. But more important, it includes uh, others, people who have influence by bringing them into the conversation early on. Uh, they're in a position to change things. Uh, people from, uh, from academia or even other think tanks uh, who are concerned with a particular issue. So the process of putting together the group itself is, is important in getting the leader thinking about ways to make this change. So in the case of, say, if you were doing something like oil to cash, distributing some of the net income from that resource directly to people, the way it's done in Alaska, say in Tanzania, you would want to have on the working group perhaps someone from the central bank or who had been at the central bank. You would, might want to have someone even from the private sector engaged in the particular issue. Um, the group meets, talks, gathers. Uh, could be one meeting over six months. It could be three or four meetings over 18 months. But the idea is to get people talking and thinking. It's trying to build some kind of consensus around a particular approach or idea. Um, there's somebody doing the real work. Um, usually it's the staff person the, who's leading the initiative, perhaps with support from uh, other staff. My colleague Owen Barter is here. He's leading a group right now on social impact bonds as a way to raise private finance to apply in a developing country to a social problem. And he has working, really helping him very much as a partner leading that group a young staff person. And this is an area, this working group, staffing a working group is a great way to have a young, bright, articulate, engaged, new junior staff person fully involved in both managing, doing background work, filling in, consulting with the members of the group. It's a great way to engage um, new staff at, at a younger level. Um, brand the problem. Um, this idea comes from, again, from Ruth Levine, who spoke to you yesterday. She had a working group that eventually put together the idea of the International Initiative for Impact Evaluation. And the decision for what to call that, the International Initiative for Impact Evaluation, that I hope many of you know about, the IIIE, was actually made at a meeting that she and one of the funders helped organize, one of the eventual funders. That's another kind of person to have on a working group is a possible funder. When you're looking for money, you get people engaged who might be interested in working in the working group. Um, the group builds a consensus and it communicates early and often with various stakeholders, uh, maybe some in the US context, talking to people who work on Capitol Hill, for example, uh, using websites, having a question and answer 
uh, facts, frequently asked questions on the website, doing briefings, maybe having some public small events. Um, so the communicating is going on inside and outside the group. At some point, there's a consultation draft that um, this the, usually is produced by the person leading the initiative. Um, and that draft is circulated inside the working group, perhaps separate from actual physical meetings. Uh, there's feedback, there's discussion, might be talked about with colleagues uh, in the, your own think tank. So this is part of this process where there's constant feedback. And then um, all along, working with the communications team, with whom, whomever is your leader on communications and outreach, on what should be the schedule, what should be the product, what should be the activity mix uh, to suit the goal. And we have 12 steps, just like um, somebody else. So step 11 is um, from the beginning, because this is a process. It's not really steps in sequence, but a set of steps that are going on all the time in some ways. Identify the key decision makers and ways to interact with them. This came up last night. I was fascinated when Trevor said that none of the South African think tanks ever approached him. And you can understand why you wouldn't send a long, complicated, interesting scholarly paper to Trevor Monwell when he was the finance minister because you know that he's not going to have time to read it. So, but what about the short, frequently asked questions? What about the policy note that might be sent to his staff who work with him at, at the junior level or sent to some of the legislators and their staffs and then asking for meetings and so on? So that's, that's part of the idea of this working group that it provides us a, a, a context in which many different ways of interacting with many different people can be um, initiated. And finally, hands off the initiative to others. <clears throat> the leader at some point, it's finished. You know, the effort has been made, the policy fix is proposed, it's out there in the world, maybe it doesn't get picked up right away. So uh, because Owen is here, I'll mention my own, uh, it wasn't done as a working group, but my, one of my own initiatives called Cash on Delivery Aid, which is a particular way to reform the foreign aid system, very much addressed to the donor world, to do aid programs in a way where the payment would come after a country actually managed to get something done that everyone agreed ought to be done. So we called it cash on delivery aid. That was a, a, a process in itself to come to that title. This I started, I don't even remember, it must be four or five years ago. So sometimes it takes a long time <clears throat> to get traction and lots of different things going on in between, lots of meetings, lots of briefings, uh, new ways to express the idea, new versions of the idea. But in the end, the, the concept is very much a fix grounded in some kind of overall initiative into which many people are brought and many people are engaged. So from research, it's all grounded, of course, in a background of very deep research. Let me end with one other point because this is all about, for all of us, going from research to change. And um, one of the things that I've often uh, said to myself and to colleagues, um, because most of our staff are engaged in research, is that there's something very valuable and this is very true in the U.S. context. I'm not as sure it's as true or as easy in developing countries. But there's something very valuable about having an expert who has spent a lot of his or her time and is spending a lot of his or her time developing his and her own expertise, writing a book, being a scholar, if that person wants to make change in the world, we want to have that be the, he or she be the person that the press calls, that the expert calls, that the uh, deputy to the finance minister calls at the critical moment when something changes and creates an opportunity, an opening for change. So it's this combination of 
grounded in research, looking for policy fixes, creating an initiative and a process which helps make the openings and then being ready for openings that are made by others to jump in <clears throat> and make the world a better place in the end. That's the point. Thank you very much. Thank you, Nancy, for a very um, systematic presentation. I think it's really sort of clarified a lot of things. And although I suspect you're still hiding a couple of uh, secrets of CDG's CDD success, the, the, the real ones. Uh, may I invite Franny?